Welcome to Relationship Renegades on Fun for Life Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Rachel Brooks Smith. And this is Emilio Palafox. And today we have some super special guests that we're so excited and grateful to be here right woo, woo, now. Woo, 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 woo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in. Today we have Lillian Garcia and Christopher Joseph. Uh, they've been together for about 17 years and married for 11. This dynamic duo are philanthropists, entertainers, and entrepreneurs. They find adventure and fun in everything they do, including working together. Lillian, Latin born, is a multi talented singer, songwriter, athlete, television personality, host, producer, and performer. Formerly a 15 year WWE legend, she is now currently the in cage announcer for the PFL, Professional Fighters League MMA on ESPN, and international recording artist with multiple albums. Christopher Joseph is a tenacious creative entrepreneur and marketing veteran with over 20 years of diverse agency experience who owns and operates an experiential event marketing and activations agency called Vocari within the verticals of lifestyle, entertainment, fashion, community, personal development, and health and fitness. Together, Lillian and Christopher work and produce a popular video podcast called Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia, which has over 8 million downloads and has been nominated for Best Podcast by Digital Hollywood. Without further ado, Lillian and CJ, welcome to the show. Hey! Yes! <laughs> Making it happen. Woo, we are so yeah. excited to have you guys. Yeah. By the way, I, I never call you Christopher Joseph. I'm always just CJ, so it's <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's interesting. It's CJ. I, guess I, mean, this, I mean, just call me CJ. Yeah. <laughs> Could you say oh, CJ? <laughs> like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? I thought we were friends, you yeah. know? <laughs> Christopher Joseph. Who is this guy? I have a funny story to tell you on yeah. that. So, it was always Christopher or Chris, Christopher <laughs> Joseph, like all these different names. And then, you know, Starbucks, when you go and you give him your name, he would give him this, you know, Christopher, and then he'd be like, is that with the K, whatever. And then finally, he just started going, CJ, CJ. CJ. <laughs> and then it stuck, and he goes, you know what? I want everybody to call me CJ. I've always wanted to be called CJ. I went, if you've always, since a kid, been wanting to be called CJ, CJ it is. I was like, but it was, it felt like Puff Daddy or Prince. I'm like, next thing you know, my name's going to be a symbol. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. All of a sudden, all my friends were like, CJ, why the, who's, who's CJ? Where the, yeah. I'm like, right over here. Chris, 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 Reinventing yourself. We'll get into we're that gonna, in the we're episode. We're going to get into reinventing you know? yourself. Identity shifts. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys have been together. You guys have been together for coming up on 17 years now, mm-hmm. and you work together, and yes. we can personally attest to the fact that you guys are very connected, very healthy mm-hmm. relationship, very fully alive relationship. Mm-hmm. So listeners want to know, how do you guys do it? <laughs> you know, and, and what advice, I know that's a loaded question, but if there's something off the top of your head that could really, if someone's listening right now, and they're in a relationship, and maybe they're struggling, and maybe they want to work with their partner or they already do and they're struggling. Mm. What advice could you give to our listeners that could really help them on their journey? Woo! <laughs> we get deep right away. Right There's away. no Here surface level conversations. <laughs> we're not, we're not in an elevator. Here we go. <laughs> Considering the fact that she's been with WWE and now combat sports and MMA, my goal is just to kind of tiptoe around and avoid the headlock. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a thing or two being the announcer around those things, so I give them the look. She's, it's all about the look. The look. I love it. You guys um, know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. No. We saw it, guys. No. I think I'll, I'll, I, I mentioned this to you guys when when we saw you not too long ago, and I'll kind of drop the drop the good the good stuff right here. Um, primarily for us, and this is actually something that we've really just doubled down on, which is. Uh, listening to understand before speaking to be understood. Mm. Man, that could not be further from the truth. Mm-hmm. It's like how many times we would catch ourselves getting into a conversation and first off, you don't always have to agree. And that's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like you don't always have to end the conversation with both of you agreeing. There's an opportunity for us to disagree and, and be mutually respectful of that. And we both have our, indep- mm-hmm. our independence. We're individuals and we're a couple. But um, anytime that we speak, not trying to make your point heard right away, it's, look, Lil came to me 
she wants to have a conversation, it's my respect for her to just listen and truly understand how she feels in the moment, where she's coming from, why is she having the conversation with me, fully understand and then respond. Mm. So it's more, you know, so that I can take action rather than being reactive in the moment, you know, and that kind of dissipates. And, and believe me when I say that is a work in progress. Mm-hmm. It's, we're not yeah. perfect at it. Right. Yeah. I think that the main thing is to remember that relationships, if you're expecting it to be perfect and never have an argument, you're doomed from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're not going to always agree. You're not going to always be, you know, rosy petals and everything is, you know, really good. Rosy but petals. I, <laughs> rosy petals. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think what really worked for us too is to get that clear understanding when he comes to me and he says, Look, I need to talk to you about something. At the very beginning, I'm like, Okay, are you going to want my opinion or do you want me just to listen? Mm. Because mm. sometimes we just want to get stuff off our chest, but we are not looking for someone to give us the answer. Mm. We just want to be heard. That's it. Mm. So a lot of times we will do that. We're like, Okay, do you really? And then. There are those times that well, he'll ask me for my opinion, but they, he doesn't necessarily like my opinion. And I have to remind him, babe, you came to me for my opinion. <laughs> so now don't critique my opinion. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll lift my hand on that one as well. I've, I've, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Maybe it's just ego. Yeah. But that's the other thing too. It's kind of like, it's not about you leave the ego at the door. I mean, these are just things that you, you trip over within the relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we trip a lot. We know that we're going to bump our head. We know we're not going to be perfect. We also know be kind to ourselves, but more importantly, it's not about you. So be kind to your partner, give them that space. And when Lil comes to me, and she's asking for safe space. I got to give that to her. Now, if within that moment, if I start, you know, like she real, says, real quick, CJ, real quick, since you mentioned safe space, uh, I always, uh, we know that all together what that yes. means. But for anybody just tuning in, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Relationship Renegades on Fun for Life Radio. We're talking to Lillian and CJ. And they're talking about creating space for each other, a safe space. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those listening, how would you describe that? Uh, I think the best way to describe it is just knowing that you are free to say what you want to say in that moment without fear of being judged or Mm -hmm. ridiculed um, or spoken over. You just want that freedom to say what you need to say without fear of how the other person is going to respond. Mm -hmm. Because my response could make Lil kind of shuffle back and, and kind of shrink and not feel like she's safe to say what she wants to get off her chest or what she has on her mind. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we also make everything about us. (laughs) That's us as beings. And sometimes, right. Um, we will have to remind each other. Like there have been times that I'm like, babe, why are you getting triggered? This has nothing to do with you. This is the way I'm feeling, whatever. And then vice versa, he'll be saying something and I'm taking it personal and I have to be reminded and he'll be like, gosh, stop making everything about you. And I'm like, you're right. I'm doing that. So calling each other out. And, but I think a, a big thing that came up for me too is if something is getting heated, time out. Mm. Like we would really be like, time out. We are too heated right now. Yeah. Nothing is making yeah. sense. Step away. We will come back to this later. And we do. We step away. We go do something else. And then when we regroup, we're able to have a respectful conversation. Yeah. But if you do it when you're heated, forget it. It's just going to go downhill from there. Yeah. yeah. I love that you brought that up. Is there any specific like tips or things that you guys have found where, because I know people have come to us in the past and they're like, okay, I just needed space and I, and I, and I, and I left and I walked away and then he, it made the situation worse. How can, do you guys have any yeah. advice for listeners of really yeah. powerful <laughs> yeah. ways of, of helping people? Yeah. There's something about the tension and I think it's because I would see my parents fight so much and I would be running into the uh, closet and just putting my hands over my ears and just crying and crying and crying. And so Mm -hmm. that whole thing of that, you know, seeing two people fight and arguing, arguing really triggers me. Mm -hmm. So whenever we would get heated, I would walk away. And then he would be like, don't you walk away from me. Right? So he would escalate. Yes. 
when I realized and I told him, I was able to say, look, I'm walking away because this is really triggering something very painful from my childhood mm-hmm. of watching my parents act like this. And I wish we weren't going there, but we're not able to have a conversation right now. So this is why I'm walking away. And that's when we started doing the timeout sign. Like mm-hmm. literally with your hands, instead of just storming out, I'll look at him and I'll go time out. And if he's still talking, I'm like, please time out, time out, babe, I need to breathe time out. Maybe this is being triggering me time out. And I will keep repeating that until he starts seeing like, Oh, I really do need to just stop right now and give her the space. Well, there's something to be said for, look, if you're in a relationship, you know, tension pops up. You know that there's going to be moments in time where you disagree on something. And it could be something that starts off as a calm conversation. And like Lil says, all of a sudden, something in that triggers you and that's when it swerves. So there is such a thing as called fight fair. Hmm. You will fight in a relationship. And I don't want to, I don't want to tippy toe around the word fight because it has just, a, it, it already has a negative connotation to it. Right. Do it fairly. And hmm. when you walk away from someone, say you're heated, we're, if we're heated and we walk away from each other in that moment, we're basically saying, I don't care about this relationship enough to stay engaged and mm. work through this. Yeah. Because once you walk away, nothing good happens, especially if you're at the height of the tension, which is what Lil said, which is time out. Now we know, oh, okay, we're getting to that point. We need to just... Yeah, we're not leave. walking away like because we don't care. We're walking away because it's. we just need to calm down exactly. and then come back. Yeah. yeah. One one of the things or themes that I'm hearing here too is, and what I love about you guys from the, from the times that we've known each other, is this idea of you know choosing to um, follow self development or personal development and like choose to both do that together and individually. And of course, we've been yeah. to some self development intensives together, and we've seen you guys on the hot seat, which is which is beautiful and, <laughs> and you've seen us on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and it's such it's such a beautiful thing because. You know, you guys are growing through life together. And I think a lot, you know, great theme right now, like we're looking outside and we see some trees, like the nature out there, it's either growing and if it's not growing, it's dying. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you guys choose to constantly grow together and find all the better ways to connect better, to be fully alive together, you know, and I think in life we get to different other stages, like different levels, different up levelings, whether it's different chapters, right? And so there's going to be different stressors. And I think the fact that you guys just continue to grow, especially communicate, which obviously is a big through line that we're hearing here Mm -hmm. is I think just, you know, is is obviously huge. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that, and this, this is for CJ here real quick, as we kind of pivot is uh, my question to you, CJ. So when I went to go visit you and as I get to know you better, you're very kind of, calm, collective, and kind of really speak eloquently at times. Was that always the case? And, and, and you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so there's a ladder. So tell, tell me about what happened there. Oh, my God. So wait, before he answers this, I got to say, I always said, man, to the world, people are saying, seeing CJ the cooler, and he had a nickname. I said, if they would see him at home sometimes, holy crap. <laughs> Yeah. But it's also because I think he felt so safe at home. I realized that that he felt like he could be himself and just let go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of people can identify with is it's <laughs> look, it's just like social media. There's there's what you see online, there's the real person. Now not to say that the real me isn't uh, still calm, cool and collected. It's just that there was a time and there was a time in my life when everything was great, you know. Um I felt invincible. I felt really happy. I mean, my, for the most of my childhood, I can remember just being very, very happy go lucky with certain members of my family. And while I don't, another truth bomb, while I don't have a relationship with my parents, which is a whole other story. And I've come to deal with why it is that way and why, why we've chosen not to have a relationship. When I met Lil, that was another happy moment in my life. And everything was great. But because, you know, I moved from another country. And when I moved from another country, I left everything I know behind. I'm here with a woman that I love. Everything is going great relationship-wise. But all of a sudden, I started noticing pieces of me were starting to disappear. 
And it was really big notice. For the longest time, I had no idea what was going on. I'm like, why am I carrying additional tension? Why am I carrying now all of a sudden there's a sadness, there's an anger? What's happening? And it was like everything that I've ever known is kind of gone. And I'm really starting anew. And when I was starting anew, I mean, everything was everything was new. Everything was different. Every experience was brand new. Um, I took risks like you wouldn't believe. Um, both good, bad, and different. Um, but I really started noticing that a piece of me was starting to get chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And it took almost a decade to figure out what was going on. Um, most recently, you know, we've had some loss in the family. Yeah. Um, we've lost Lil's mom. We lost her, you know, just uh, four years ago. Dad, dad, four years ago. Mom, about a month ago. Yeah, about a month and a half ago. So right. My grandmother, just a week before my mom. Lil's mom. Um, my sister in law, her mother in law. I mean, mm. not my sister. No, my, no, no, my no. sister in law's mom. My sister in law's mom. Your sister in law's mom. <laughs> my, my sister's, sister's mom. Her sister's mom. <laughs> Wait, yeah. My sister's mother in law. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can't even get it straight. See, yeah. Going through a lot. A lot of losses. Yeah. A lot of loss. A lot of losses. So at the onset of this conversation, I had said that there's both us as individuals and then there's us as a team. Never forget who you are individually because you won't be there to show up for the team. Mm. And I really had to take a step back and I had no idea what a true reset meant. And there are going to be opportunities within a person's life to identify when it's time to reset. And it was a drastic reset. I took a 10-day sabbatical off the grid. Lillian is the only person that had access to me. I really had to take myself on and choose in to say, how many more times am I going to get up, look at the guy staring back at me in the mirror, and just say, I am not happy with you. I don't like this feeling. I miss Lil New. I missed that feeling of just like rocketing out of bed, being excited to take on the day. Everything was exciting, smiling over everything, laughing over everything, being the cooler that Lil yeah. New and my colleagues have known. And I'm like, where's that guy? I was met with the challenge. I took the challenge. Uh, you guys, we, we just got together. This happened not too long ago. And it was no food. It was only fresh juices. It was no screens, no media, no platforms, no professional work whatsoever, no friends, no talking to anybody. It was like lifestyles of the rich and the monkness. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was torturous. It was... I think the best way that I could describe it is it was beautiful chaos, mm. meaning I met myself. I got through some things that I had been suppressing and I took the challenge head on. I committed to it because you have the torture days in there where you're really met with, am I going to continue or am I going to stall out? Mm. Once you make that commitment to see it all through, that's when the beautiful things start to pop up and Lil and I, I mean, coming out of that, I looked at the relationship different. I looked at my relationship with myself different. I looked at the relationships that I'm creating outside of me differently. All that kind of comes full circle into realizing that times I made a mess of things, but it's my own fault and I have to accept full responsibility for it. And all these things that I do, it's just never about me. It's how I show up for everyone else. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, no, yeah. Thanks for sure. But you took that time for yourself <laughs> so that you could okay. show up better for everyone else. And your partner allowed you to take that time and supported you in that time, even though, Lil, you told us that sometimes it was really challenging for you to do that. And so I think. Yeah. The embodiment of of that, you know, for the listeners that are listening, if you're going through a really hard time or you're having those challenges where I know I've had those moments in life where I'm like, I do not like the person that I'm seeing in the mirror. And I couldn't necessarily, you know, different times, whether sometimes I knew why, sometimes I'm like, I just, this is more challenging to figure out why. There are layers and layers and layers. So I love that you went on this 10 day sabbatical Mm -hmm. and your guys' journey together. And I love that you guys are both growing, both individually, but also as a team. Mm -hmm. So 
before we get to the rapid fire questions, would love, you know, Lil, from your perspective, if someone's in a relationship right now, you know, given off of your perspective and they're in a relationship and one of them feels like they're growing and the other person doesn't, what advice could you give to those people and, or just any of that capacity where you feel like I want to grow more, but the other person doesn't, or I wanted to help this person, but I don't want them to feel like I'm trying to fix them. How yeah. can people, how can we help people with that? Wow. It's amazing that you picked me to answer that because <laughs> perfect person to answer. I was there. <laughs> so there were times that I was definitely in that. I'm going to grow. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he didn't want anything, any part of it at all. And it was frustrating to me. And I remember even signing him up for a few of these courses and he did it, but I could tell because he didn't invest the money or invest the, the, you know, being the one to sign up or whatever. He kind of just went along because I was doing it. So sure enough, the outcome was, was just that, um, he looked at it as, yeah, you, you go fix yourself. You need this. I don't need this. Mm. So it frustrated me a lot. And I was thinking, God, what do I do? Because I love this man. And I know he's got all of these amazing attributes, but I feel like we could really gain together by growing together. And I think the biggest thing for me was to finally get to a place where I, I just let go. Mm. Uh, I just decided to be the one. I, I wanted to get up. I wanted to experiment. I wanted to do the 5 a.m. club. I wanted to find out what is it like to wake up at 5 and what's all of this, you know, talk about that and everything. Now, it just so happens that I actually love it. I mean, I love waking up in the five o'clock hour. I mostly around five thirty, five forty, five. I'm up and I'm doing my morning, and it's a very you sacred, beautiful <laughs> thing. He still doesn't love to wake up in the five o'clock hour, and I realized that's okay. Mm. It's fine. It's not for everyone. Uh, he's got his own ritual, and I had to stop putting my rituals and my wants and my the way I was looking at things on him. Mm. And uh, I think once I started doing that, as long as we were both committed to just growth and, you know, whether it's reading or, or taking on and working together and chasing glory and then still having our projects too on our, on the side so that we can have our own identities. Uh, once we started doing that, man, everything's been falling into place. And I mean, not forcing him, he's actually wanted to do these things. Yeah. I think there's so much power in letting go for sure. And, you know, before we do jump into uh, rapid fire questions for those of you just joining us right now, this is Relationship Renegades on Fun for Life Radio. We're about to jump into favorite, uh, I'm sorry, rapid fire questions. But what what I love here is that there's a quote that comes to mind, and it's um, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Mm. And you know, it, it, it's like it's all in divine timing. You know, as we always talk about, and I think once you let go, you know, CJ in his own time found out what he wanted to commit to, what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it. And again, had more kind of skin in the game, if you will, like you said. Mm -hmm. And I think just so much power. I think sometimes we just want to control so much. And, and when we let go, there's a lot of beauty that can come about. And I think that's a perfect example of what you just shared. So, yeah. And especially let, when uh, it comes to night and morning routines or like behaviors. I know I also have shared like, oh man, I... I love working out when I first wake up. Like I want to move my body and we've, and I was always like, babe, come work out with me in the morning. Come. It's so special. You're going to love it. It's amazing. It's the best. And I really had to learn. No, that's good for me. That doesn't mean that's good yeah. for him and, yeah. and vice versa. And so I, I love that you guys also learned that. I think people listening, mm -hmm. the more that we can let go of those and just make those special times special yeah. for us doesn't mean it has to be special for everybody. Yeah. And it's like you guys started out, uh, you guys were talking about seek to understand. Yes. And it's like this constant understanding each other, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, like how do we work? together in this and really supporting and loving and creating that space for each other. So, uh, without further ado, you want to take us fire. into rapid fire, my love? Yes, I do. Okay. Right. Rapid fire. <laughs> 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 rapid yeah. fire question number one. I cannot believe they just did that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And these well, are, these are rapid fire. So they're quick, yeah. quick questions, quick answers. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Here we go. Number one, whoever wants to go first, what fortune would you like to receive on a fortune cookie? Hmm. That's one, babe. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's true. Wait, 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 wait. It could be funny. I like to just, uh, I think, just, just, 
<laughs> make things easier. Like your life, Boom. your life will be easier if you just let go. Yes. Hey, fortune cookie number one. <laughs> that was, that was a delicious fortune cookie. Yeah. What about you? Was it just hmm? Yeah. What was yours? <laughs> <laughs> it was just hmm. <laughs> was one or the other yeah um yeah, wow you say keep like it simple. Simple. i like i like keep it so come on panda um, <laughs> i like come on panda everything will be all right and it's in the end and if it's not all right then it is not that yet the end oh, oh that was great. dropping some <laughs> i did not make that up but i love that fortune plan. cookie bombs That's up in here pretty good guys yeah. i'm okay. impressed i'm impressed that was so, rough so next question let's see cj you'll answer this one first um, just because, yeah, the order here. Uh, <laughs> so if you woke up at 3 a.m., you can't fall asleep, you turn on the TV and there's a movie playing, what movie does it have to be for you to tune in and watch the entire thing? Uh, I got a few. Yeah, what, what top three? Go. <laughs> top three, go. Uh, Ocean's Eleven, Gladiator. Uh, wow. Wow. Those, uh, it could be those two, Ocean's Eleven Gladiator. No, we're waiting for a third one, babe. We're waiting for a third one. <laughs> wow. I, I can't even have one right now. Kung Fu Panda. She said it earlier. Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu? Wow. Kung Fu Panda. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And it doesn't matter which one. Okay. Love yeah. those noodles. Love those noodles. In fact, I really do like number three. Okay. Yes. I have to say, we love a lot of the same things, but then there's some things that we just are so separate. Those are not my movies. <laughs> It'll be okay, but they're not my top three. Okay, what are uh, yours, Lil? I think, wow, I'm going to get deep here. Shawshank Redemption. Woo, Ooh, we love that. Shawshank Redemption. All the way to Stuart Little. I mean, the kid like inside. Yes. I can really watch that. Um, and then I'd have to watch a series or something. Uh, what series did we see that was just so good? Jane the Virgin! I love the Virgin! Yes! I love it. We forgot you told us to watch that. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. I love it. So okay. No, we both have cartoons, though. Yeah, we both have cartoons, yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. Okay, speaking Third. of which, great question. What was your favorite cartoon show growing up? Oh, wow. Thundercats. Boom. Ooh, Thundercats. I I think my favorite was the Flintstones. Oh, I the Flintstones. love the Flintstones. Oh, great old times! Oh my god, we butchered. Okay, anyway. no, that was great. All right, rapid fire. Last okay. one. Here we go. Last one. Let's. We just come up with these on the spot. Um, yes. Good. All right. If you could swim in a favorite liquid, what liquid would it be, and why? <laughs> but it can't be water. It can't be water. Can't be water. Oh, well, and it's liquid. Jealous uh, chocolate liquid. pudding. <gasps> yes. Chocolate pudding. All right. Actually, I got thrown into chocolate pudding as as part of a skit at WWE, uh, and one of the wrestlers threw me in, and I just have to say I was covered in chocolate pudding. Wow. And when we went to the back the whole time, I was like, mm, yes. <laughs> 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 "Can I go in again?" That's, That's awesome. So great. I yeah, love it. This is really yummy. That's a great story. Okay, CJ, you're up. It, 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 does Jello qualify? Yeah. Jello, yeah. I think that would be really fun. You like Jello? I would like Jello. I would like yeah. to swim in Jello. Yeah. Yeah. J E L L O to Lion. Okay, awesome. Well, that was the rapid fire. Yeah, we did that. The show. Yes. Super fun. Welcome back to Relationship Renegades on Fun for Life Radio with Lillian and CJ here, special yes. guests. Um, we just finished the rapid fire segment, you know, kind of getting back to what we were talking about. Mm hmm. You guys work together. Yes. And I think there's a lot of couples now, especially in today's digital world, mm -hmm. that are like, man, I kind of want to work with my partner. Or or they're working with their partner and they're having some challenges or they're trying to figure it out. Is there anything that you guys have learned on your journey of working together? Best practices. That would help other couples out there that are doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, wow. Like okay. <laughs> so I think at first I would say you got to literally... No, if working together is the best thing for you. Not everyone should be working together. Mm. Now, when we started working together, literally it was the summer of 2019. We were in Toronto. We had just gone to Robin Sharma's, um, uh, what do you call it? Mastermind. His mastermind. If you don't know him, the yeah. one who sold his Ferrari, mm. amazing, amazing. book. And actually set us on our path yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Amazing. So, 
during that that whole weekend, I realized I knew that I needed somebody to help me with Chasing Glory because Chasing Glory had grown to be so big. Uh, but it was, you know, on video as well now. And it was a lot of work, as you guys know. It's a lot of work to do these shows. And I was so stressed to the max. I was, I was, it was just too much for one person to be doing it all. So I remember that I was looking for somebody and by the end of the three days, I stopped in the middle of the street and I looked at him and I, and I went, oh my God, like I know who can help me with this. And he's Ooh. like, who? Who? He's so excited. And I was like, you. And he looked at me like, what? And I said, you are the perfect guy to work on this. And I knew it from, from that moment. I said, but here's the thing. I don't ever want you to accept this position. Like I would love for you to do it, but I don't want you to accept it. If you don't think that you're hundred percent committed or if this is up your alley or if this just, if you're passionate about this, right? I don't want you to feel forced into it. I don't want you to feel like obligated or anything like that. And you're not here to save me or any, like mm. it needs to be a decision because you want to do this. And, um, I, I told him too, I said, I don't want a decision right now. Like, think about it. Mm -hmm. And so he ended up thinking about it by the next day. He was like, this mission is great. And, uh, we set forward. Now, does that mean that we haven't had bumps in the road? No, we've had plenty of bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the main thing was we, we own a four by four. (laughs) 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 I love it. Um, I think he got these tattoos. (laughs) Yeah. Um, no, but I, I think the main thing was is that when we started seeing, like, whenever I would come up with a suggestion and he would get defensive, I'm like, hey, babe, I'm not attacking your methods or anything like that. Um, this is just a suggestion of the way that I feel things could go or an idea for the show or something. Uh, and I think that we had to work through that because he mm-hmm. was taking it as I, I was maybe yeah. questioning his, yeah. his ways. Well, mm-hmm. the thing about it is identify where your strengths are. Yeah. How are you going to complement each other? There's, again, there's the whole individual thing and then the team thing. What do you bring to, what do I bring to the table? What does Lillian bring to the table? And then where do we collaborate? And that was the big thing is that we're both creatives. Yeah. At heart, we're both creatives. And when you get two creatives in a room, it's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not to say that one idea is necessarily. <laughs> I know you guys know. Yeah. It's not to say necessarily that one idea is better than the other or worse than the other. It's just you've got great ideas, but what it is is first give yourself the space to just throw every idea out. This isn't about we're taking this one, we're not taking this one. Throw the spaghetti against the wall. Yeah. Let it stick. Take a look at it. Then step back and realize. Okay, well, maybe we should have a conversation about this one. Let's put these ones to bed. What's your role in this? What's my role in this? So again, it was really identifying and being objective as to what role we both play. Mm -hmm. Then, who else do we need on the team? That too. Mm -hmm. Because we could look at we as an I, right? And that's not going to move you forward very quickly. Mm -hmm. We quickly realized... That if we're looking at ourselves as an I, we need a team so that there's a we. We need people to come in and be able to, not necessarily be a mediator, but be able to objectively pitch in and be like, you know what? This kind of works because of this. And then we have, so basically we we built a staff. Yeah. And if you don't build it, look at this as a company. Mm -hmm. Build a staff, invest the money. If you don't invest the money, and you don't create a team around you. And the right team. And the right team. I am telling you, because I've built a business. I've had a business since 2010. And those, um, an entrepreneur as well. Team is everything. Yeah, you're going to get so burnt out that it's not going to be fun. And then why the hell did you even start it? Yeah. yeah. So that was the thing about uh, getting, and, and like we said, the right team. Because we have definitely had some people that we had employed before oh. that were not right partners everything's fine. We left it all in good standings, but we, we had to let people go too, to be like, this is just not the right fit. Cause it was just causing too much angst for us and too much more work. I know yeah. it's a bit of a pivot from what you guys are talking about, but I mean, seriously, because we are working together it is a legitimate company. It is a business and we have to be able to separate 
personal and professional. And when we do hire people and we invest that money, you got to make sure, like Lillian is saying, the right people have to be aligned to the mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? We'll yeah. pay you for your value. But are you aligned to the mission? If you're not, you're not on the team. Yeah. And we always said, and we still say it to this day, the moment the business starts taking over where we're just right. butting heads and the tension is up and we're not agreeing, we will sacrifice the business because mm. that doesn't mean as much to us as a relationship. Right. Relationship is always first. It's always first. Did you guys talk about that at the beginning, like when you started, or has that ever come up? Like where you're like, all right, nope, scratch this idea. We're not doing this. It's too much tension, or it's too much, or like, have you had to go on breaks, or like anything like that? No, we we dove in. We dove in with tons of excitement, and because we never really we really never worked together like no. this. We bounce ideas off of each other. So we didn't really know to anticipate. We also didn't know. uh, We didn't anticipate any pitfalls or any tensions or any trigger points or anything like that. We just dove in with excitement and then things would pop up. But with all the work that we've been doing, we also knew that when things pop up, you can work through anything. You got to find out and get to the root. Why are you getting so triggered? Everything comes down to a trigger, right? Why are you getting so triggered? And let's get down to the root of that. And once we did, then we started figuring out, okay, this really has nothing to do with me. I just kind of reminded you of what, I don't know, your mom said this or uh, other teammates said this to you you before your past boss has said this. And that was the thing too, is that he was looking at me as the boss, right? Because I I started the company, I started chasing glory. And then all of a sudden he started feeling like I'm the boss telling him what to do. I started, I was like, no, we're in this together. But I want to keep reminding you. You were the CEO. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's amazing. So, I think that's what it was. That was the prince of (laughs) dumps. No. That's what he was feeling, like the prince of dumps. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I would have never asked you to be a part of this had I not seen your value. So it's also like what he was talking about, his background, um, and how he's feeling a little lost. I had to also remember that and remind him, dude, you are so capable. This is where you shine. I can't do this. Like Mm -hmm. you wouldn't be part of this if it wasn't for what I know that you can attribute to it. So reminding him of all of that allowed Mm -hmm. him uh, triggers away and just do his. I think a a big thing that I, that we're, that we're hearing right now too, is whether it's personally or professionally, you guys are always creating a space, which is a big, this is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why we feel you guys are a relationship renegade is because a big theme for relationship renegades is to ensure that we're creating a space where the other person is feeling safe, seen, heard, and loved. Mm -hmm. Whether it's one of those, all of those, or a couple of those, Mm -hmm. it's like, whether it's personally or professionally, something's going on. You guys aren't just kind of like scratching the surface with it. It's like, okay, let's create the space here. What's going on, love? Let's, do we need to take a time out? Do we need to talk about it now? Where is it coming from? And because you guys are dedicated to growth, you guys can kind of hash it out and communicate in such a way where that root is pulled up and you're like, oh, we're good. We've up leveled. Let's continue to rock and roll, yes. whether it's personally or professionally. And I think so many people out there, and that's kind of what we talk about in terms of like choosing differently. We yes. feel the masses very much, the the way that they do is they just, they, they hide, suppress and deny things. They don't want to talk about it. They're scared to talk about it, whether it's surface level or deep. Mm-hmm. They put it under the rug. You know, maybe we'll talk about it next week or 15 years from now. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, hey, how do we create this space like you talked about earlier mm-hmm. where we can just dissect this together? Because as, as some of the things we put in our socials, it's like if we don't take care of our childhood traumas, they're going to show up in our relationships. And it's fine if they do. But because you guys always create that space, we're able to continue to like pull the weeds out as we go through life together. And I just love, and I want to honor and respect you guys for uh, showcasing that, embodying that and, and providing examples of that for our audience. Yeah. So, so, so powerful. And, you know, w- with that, with the theme of, and we're going to get into the renegade moment next, which is mm-hmm. usually always our favorite um, mm-hmm. segment. Um, and that renegade moment really is that moment when you chose differently, you know, that might've been like that moment where it was the biggest transformational period of your life or that moment when 
you were doing something a certain way, you got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then you're like, okay, I am choosing differently. And so would love to hear from you guys. You know, what was that? Or a, because we probably had several, but what was a renegade moment for each of you that really was that moment when you chose differently and it changed everything? Great question. I know mine. Great question. Go I know ahead. mine. I know mine because, okay, so I was in WWE for 15 years, mm-hmm. but I, it was separated. It was, I was there for 10 years and then I left for two and then I came back for five. When I was there in those first 10 years, Unfortunately, I would take certain things that were said, I would take it personal. Mm -hmm. And I felt in a way of like it was bringing me back to some of my childhood traumas of coming into this country, feeling bullied, um, you know, uh, taking, like I said, just taking things completely out of context. And I remember that during that time, I was at a friend's house and she told me about this course and she said, Hey, Lil, I just finished taking this course and it just really did something for me. And I really think it would be great for you. And I remember looking at her and I said, I have to do something different. So I agree with you and I want to give it a try. And it was called PSI, Personal Success Institute. And that sent me on that weekend of a three day um, beginner weekend to then seven days of, uh, what was it called? I couldn't remember. No, what it's called. It's been a while ago. So seven days that you're at a ranch and then for their leadership. Their yeah. one was a leadership. Mm. Size seven. That's Size what it was. Seven. Size seven. Um, <laughs> and that, in that growing period, which is the first time I'd really done like personal development. Now that was also part of the one that I was telling you about that I wanted CJ to do with me. So we kind of did it. He, but he, he was reluctant um, through it as well. He did it, but it was, you know, <laughs> okay. strings, but. the thing is, it, it, the result, like, it worked out the way that it was supposed to in that time for me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I complement what I needed at that time, which was wh- whether Lil got more or I got less, that's exactly where yeah. I needed to be. Yep. Yeah. There it is. What happened though in that time? I grew so much that when I went back to the WWE the second time around, it was night and day. I had so much fun Mm -hmm. and I realized how I was making everything about me and uh, where now things would be be said um, as a joke, where before it was always said as a joke, but I took it so personal that I would laugh at it or I'd, I'd zing it right back or whatever. I just came back such a different person and from then it's just been so great and and everything that I do uh, I can take off that whole bully aspect of it and feeling like that and being that little girl who felt attacked all the time and so that was my renegade moment what yeah was it was it an experience that you had at the ranch was it something you heard was it something that like we're all of a sudden like huh like what was it during that time that made the switch when I was at leadership, it's 10 days all with women. Mm. Women were the ones that bullied me. Mm. So now being 10 days with only women face to face, oh my God, mm. like it really, I, I had so much anxiety going there. I was like, they're not going to like me. They're this, like all, I felt like I was that little girl going, you know, to, to from Spain to South Carolina and being picked on. And then by the end of it, realizing that they really did like who I was and my essence and them, uh, me realizing that I was reading them wrong. I was automatically making up something that would have a look or something. And I was automatically making it about me. Oh, they don't like me. Oh, they're, they're judging me or whatever. When it had nothing to do with me and everything to do with what they were going through too. And I think that's what we forget. We forget that people are going through their own struggles, their own journeys, their own paths, their own insecurities. Mm -hmm. And we make everything about us. (laughs) And once I started to just say, I'm going to show up. This was a big one, Emilio. When I said, I'm going to show up and have, uh, it's not about me and whether you like me but how I show up for you. How do I make you feel Mm. when you're in my presence? And when I did that and I make people now feel, I try to make them feel special when they're in my presence and make it about 
embracing them and their love and whatever and not about me that has changed everything mm-hmm. uh, that reminds me of one of my favorite quotes it's also helped me because I have a very similar experience like life experience um, that I continually have to remind myself you know people won't remember what you said but they'll remember right. how you made them feel and just always whenever I get that anxiety of I'm like what if they don't like me what if they say bad things about me what if blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, because I too was very, you know, I felt like I just never fit in growing up. And so it was always that feeling mm-hmm. of like wanting to be accepted and loved and not yeah. getting it. Yeah. And so now it's so amazing. If you're listening right now and you struggle with social anxiety or any sort of, you know, that those kind of insecurities popping up when you twist it, when you make it about the other person, if you focus on how can I make this person feel loved and special, it is, it's pretty miraculous, honestly, what it does for you, but also yeah. for the other person. It just helps us get out of our own head mm-hmm. um, and be present yeah. with each other. So pretty I, renegade. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that because people would look yeah. at you, Lillian, and be like, oh, she <laughs> never deals with insecurities. She's the most beautiful woman in the world, you know, right, like, and right. I, and I really appreciate you sharing that from a very like raw, real space, because I think people need to hear it, you know, and, and I shared the same stuff of like, I, mm-hmm. I battle with that all the time. And yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that Lillian. And what about you, CJ? CJ renegade moments. <laughs> I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeVille. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, like you said, there's, there's a lot of different chapters. That's the way that I've realized things are right in life. There's going to be chapters. Um, <laughs> Man, can I offer this? I think now your sabbatical was mad. Oh, no, 100%. I was going to say there's a lot of things that led up to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, that's why I said the timing of this is is right on point because, yeah, my greatest moment was two weeks ago mm-hmm. or three weeks ago. Now. Um, I got to see the change. You really got to see the change. I mean, when mom, so. Lil's mom, my mother-in-law, and truth be told, my mom, mm. um, she supported me really, <laughs> she supported me in a great, great way. And when I saw, so when, in 2016, when we started taking care of dad, Lil's dad, essentially my dad, um, that was really, really tough. You meet yourself in these moments where you become the caretaker um, Lillian had just retired from WWE. We had caretakers, other caretakers, not just Lil and her sister. Um, but I mean, on any given day, there's like eight people in and out of the home. It was our home. And I was the only one that had a job at that point. And it got really, really tough. And I made some poor decisions. I made some okay decisions, but you know, it was those poor decisions that were just, and I'm being kind to myself. We've had a conversation about this is in that moment. You really don't know how you're going to react. This is all brand new. Emotions are high. Tension is high. Life is fragile. You don't know what you're doing. And I learned a lot from that. Now I had both success and a lot of failure in that moment. A lot of failure. And when mom just now, you know, she passed away, you know, over a month ago and she really got sick during the pandemic, not COVID related at all. Just want to be clear. Natural, natural. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's cancer. It's cancer. Well, sorry. Yes. Natural yeah. meaning it was cancer. But I saw this woman, he came and it was very, very different. This time it was Lillian, her sister and myself. And within the last two months, three months, three months that we, that mom was here. She got here in January. Okay. So mom gets here in January. We move mom in with us. So here we are full circle. It's, it's the same situation all over again with the difference that there's not a lot of caretakers. The caretakers are literally Lil and her sister. And then there's me. So in that moment, I showed up. I remembered Mm. who I was in the moment when dad passed to who am I going to be this time? Mm. It was like my do over Mm. and I showed up and it was really, really cool because, and Lil said it best. She's like, my sister and I were taking care of mom and you were taking care of us. Mm. 
And I made a point of ensuring that every night there was a meal on the table and I Home created a meal. <laughs> I found I found out that there's a, a gourmet CJ. Yes. <laughs> yes. Chef CJ. Um, it's so good. You we can attest. Yes. Yes. Um, and I really, really do love to cook, but it was about creating an experience where we could all come to the table, decompress, talk about the day, and kind of get recharged for the next day. But then fast forward. You know, mom passes, and now it's time for the reset. And as I explained earlier on in the show, um, explaining this ten day sabbatical that I had, that was my that was my renegade moment. Mm-hmm. That was me looking at myself in the mirror, saying, "It's now or never, dude." Mm-hmm. And guess what? You're going to have another moment like this, but it's going to be better, mm-hmm. right? It's it will never be now because you're choosing to be better. You're going to do what it takes. You're going to commit to yourself and everyone else around you. And then when that next time comes, it just means it's going to be that next stepping stone to the next chapter, Mm -hmm. right? Consistently being better, consistently wanting to evolve. And that's the key word there is the want. Mm -hmm. The moment that I stop wanting to choose in, then we're done. I mean, any relationship, Mm -hmm. the moment you stop, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like what you said at so the beginning with even with nature, right? If a plant's not growing, it's, it's we're done. dying. We're, yeah. if we're not growing in some capacity, then we're, you know, yep. we're dying. And I just, you know, thank you for sharing that. And, and I love the, the, some more themes here that are coming up from a lot of these conversations, especially the one you just told is um, taking ownership, responsibility for how you showed up, how you want to show up now. And mm-hmm. the fact that there are chapters and we always have these chapters, whether it's the day by day, or the week by week, or whether it's the quarterly chapters, or maybe when you move chapters, whatever it may be, you get to choose how you want to show up yeah. in that moment. Yeah. You can reset for tomorrow, or you can reset when you go through something like a 10 day thing, like you did. It's chapters, and we always have an opportunity to reinvent ourselves. So, I think for those of you guys just tuning in right now, you're listening to Relationship Renegades on Fun for Life Radio, where we're talking about in the moment, right now, mm-hmm. you may not like who you are, you may look in the mirror. And you may have hidden, suppressed, or denied certain things in your life, but you can always choose to accept those responsibilities or accept how you're showing up. And and in doing that, you're processing stuff already. And then you get to choose how you want to show up right now or right now or right now because we all have have is this moment. So I, I, I love some of the themes that are coming up of not only seek to understand, taking ownership, uh, but that we have these chapters. And and it's so beautiful. Like we could always yes. choose differently every moment of the day. And we're never done. Like it's yeah. never over. I think somebody was like, oh man, like when does it end? I'm like, well, when does it end? Like <laughs> portion cookie. It doesn't end. Like everything else. The fun is in the journey. It's not the destination. Yeah. And until we can actually know that, see that, feel that in everything that we do, whether it's relationship or career. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, the whole basis on chasing glory really is talking about the chase for glory. But as we do on these interviews, realizing like, what is glory? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, it's, it's going to be different to everybody. And really, it's all in the chase. It's all in that journey mm-hmm. that you get the glory. Yeah. Um, well, and even when I think, you know, CJ, you were talking about when you kind of lose a bit of that chase. When you stop uh, finding new ways to challenge yourself or finding new ways to, you know, grow, then you kind of lose that that passion or that, that drive for life. And so mm-hmm. I think it's always looking for those opportunities to grow. You know, okay, what coach do I need to work with now or what? What, what sabbatical do we need to go on now or what new, you know, fitness program or wellness program or whatever it is or, mm-hmm. or what new travel experience do I need to create? Like something that's going to make me grow yeah. and change. Um, and I know we're getting, you know, close to the wrap up of the show before we get to favorite finds. I think what I would love to know from you guys, right? How did you know? So I think there's a lot of people struggling right now. Um, you know, if they're dating and they're in relationships, and that frustrating, and I've had this before in the past where I was like, how do I know that the person I'm with is the one? And people used to tell me all the time, oh, when you know, you know. And I honestly thought that was a bunch of bullshit because I had never really experienced that. I always felt this unsure, this questioning, and like, how, how do you really know? Um, so how did you guys know? And could you give any, any advice to someone who's in a relationship and they're not sure um, mm. and they feel stuck or trapped or frustrated in mm. that relationship? Look, truth be told, full transparency and honesty, we 
we're very, very fortunate enough to have the spark. I mean, when I say that, we have the quintessential love at first sight. First sight. Yeah. I mean, it was literally electricity when our right. shoulders touched. <laughs> <laughs> the shoulders touched, and it was like mm, putting your finger in an electrical socket. Woo! In a good way! <laughs> <laughs> It, was, it really was. And there is a big story behind that. But yeah. I, I think that I would also say this. There's no one else I want to fight for. Mm. No matter we went what. The, yeah. We went to hell or high water. We, that, and that's our saying. Hell or high water. Hell or high water. We want to be together. Nothing will stop it. No matter what comes in between us. And believe me, there's been things and there's been challenges where the relationship, I'm not, I don't mean that it's on the line, but there's that moment where it's like, no, F this, we're moving through this and we're together. It's just never ending. Not even mm. a question. Yeah. Mm. This is the person I fight for. Whenever I would feel anxious or something or my own stupid beliefs would come up and try to maybe sabotage a relationship or sabotage like this, it, maybe I'm just too happy. As soon mm. as I kissed him, <laughs> That was it. Like, it was just a calmness that came over me mm. that I just knew. Like, I I have to, I want to be with this man. There's just a, such a connection. So, mm. um, but yeah. So, I love that. Yeah. But I have to say this because I came up with this while we were um, in, in this conversation. And I want to leave this. I don't know why. I just feel compelled to share this because when he said something about fighting, it's okay. Like people say the word fight fair or the word fight. And I think that you can look at the word fight so differently and and as opposed to negative Mm. and something that I made it spell out and you can just create your own is F I G H T stands for find intelligence growing highly together. Oh, I mm. love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> I yeah. Love say it that. one more time, yeah, Lily. Say it one more time. What does fight stand for? Find intelligence growing highly together. Wow. So that means in the whole growth, you Ooh. can actually get intellectually inspired and and just knowledge that you go, oh my God, I know why I come, I, I do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Now I know why I do this, right? All of that is the intelligence of it breaking yeah. through. But if you do that growing highly together, then it's that's the fight that you're fighting for, yeah. right? That's yeah, the I love good that. Fight. Well, so, it's, a, it's kind of like Rachel. Yeah. Well, I think I think with that perspective, it's like anytime you're in that fight, right? It's just choosing differently. And you can choose that perspective rather than, you know, you can get into something where it could either be something that completely separates you mm-hmm. or gets you closer connected with each other. And you guys choose that. And you guys choose that perspective. And so if you guys are just joining in, we are uh, these lovely humans and souls are dropping some golden nuggets for you all. But before we go into our last segment of our favorite, their favorite finds of what they found recently, one of the ones that I think uh, the last thing here, because I know you said one last thing, babe, and I always say one last thing, (laughs) is another thing that we feel relationship renegade is, is um, relationships that find ways to have more fun, uh, be more fully connected, whether it's to themselves, others, the world around them. And they're kind of like flowing like nature. They're kind of ebbing and flowing with things happening. And so what we've seen from you all recently that I love is, you know, during this conversation, you guys were going a lot. In the past year, there was a lot of losses that you guys talked about. There was stuff going on in your existing home. There was, of course, professional stuff, stress stuff individually together, all these things happening. And when you guys were going through all this stuff, there was an oper- there was a time, uh, CJ, you told me where, you know, you're like, hey, you know what? Let's take a vacation. Let- let's go to this place and let's just kind of, you know, go there and-, and enjoy ourselves for a little bit and take some time off. And-, and during that time, you're like, hey, why don't we look for some properties and kind of just ebbing and flowing. You're just kind of going with the flow. And, and you did. And-, and it's almost like things weren't so rigid and so like it has to be like this and so controlling. And I love... The let go as we're talking again here. And just that I love this like ebb and flow of things. And I wanted to, and then you found a great place and then you had no idea you were going to move there. And then you ended up moving there. And then like all this abundance and beauty is coming out from that. Yes. So I just want our audience to listen. What are some, how were you guys or how do you guys, um, how are you guys able to achieve 
that ebb and flow in life, to continue to just dance with life and not control so much? Like, what? how's that landing? And can you explain to our audience how you guys are able to achieve that? It's it, Honestly, it's just the work that we've that we've done. I would say that it doesn't, it comes more natural now, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that the work that we've done allows us to be more aware in the moment. What are we feeling in the moment? How are we feeling? Why? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's honestly the amount that we've, I, and I can speak for myself, um, it's just that the amount of work that I've been able to do on myself and taking myself on because I, much like you're asking the question, it's it's that knowing. Mm. So it's it's just being kind kind to ourselves in the moment, understanding where we are, not being afraid to have a conversation about what could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too. It's it's the experiences that that we've been getting. Everything keeps always working out. Even when things kind of go negative, like last year, not only did we have the pandemic, we moved twice, which we were not expecting to do. <laughs> uh, we had major mold issues in the new place. Uh, we had to live out of a suitcase for five months. Thank God for the purpose. Thank mm -hmm. you. Big shout out to them um, <laughs> for taking mm -hmm. us in. Um, and then, and then finally having to find a new place. But it was always also having the attitude, this is happening for us, not to us. Mm. For us, not to us. Keep going with the flow. Maybe this is supposed to happen. This is supposed to happen. This is supposed to happen. And every time we started having that kind of attitude, we started realizing, oh my God, like we ended up not having to pay rent for so long last year in the middle of pandemic when we both lost everything. So thank God for that. Mm. There was a silver lining. Yes, we lived out of a suitcase for five months, but there was a huge silver lining from that. Mm. And then, like you said, ended up finding and being in a place where we absolutely love. Mm. And that was because we just gave up on thinking that things have to look a certain way. way. Yeah. And I will attribute that as well. Talking about a whole rigid thing. Uh, working with a coach is so important because coaches help in, for example, uh, I'll never forget somebody telling me that uh, this, they were like, why are you working with a vocal coach when you already know how to sing? Mm. I was like, well, why do you think Tom Brady has a football coach? Because coaches are on the outside looking in, they can make small tweaks. They can point things out that you can't do on yourself, no matter how good you are. Uh, so that's the thing with us is that we continue to work with coaches so that we can get that outside perspective. And mm. literally the coach just told me just the other day, stop being so rigid. So mm. you said the word rigid. I went, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's true because I catch myself sometimes in my morning, my mornings, remember my sacred mornings, I would be like, Oh, they have to look like this and this has to get done. And it's been like, no, I don't want to work out to this morning. It's okay. I'll do it in the afternoon. I, I get yeah. I stop being rigid and I'm a lot happier. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wonderfully said. Beautifully said. So much. Thank you. Said. Thank you. Right there. That, that absolute Everything let go. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I was just thinking as you were talking about that, you know, I, I love thinking of what's called habits, right? Talk a lot about like hero habits and this concept of, I think so much of us, like, if someone's listening right now and they're like, Oh, I can't let go. Like I, I need to have more control. I need to feel like I'm in control. Maybe that's just a habit that you've gotten really good at for the past, you know, 20, 30, 40, however many years, but that's only because we've practiced it so much. We've programmed ourselves to think that that's the best way when in reality, we actually don't have control anyways. <laughs> and so the more that we think that, you know, we're trying to hold on to things. It actually, it does cause more, more stress, anxiety, because yeah. we're resisting the change. We're resisting that like, but if we could just let go more often, there's this huge opportunity to reprogram this habit. And I think the more we practice, and I feel like in our relationship for sure, the more that we practice let go, mm -hmm. like you said, CJ, it kind of gets easier and easier and easier because we're, we rewired our brains to be like, oh no, when I let go, good things happen. You know, like mm -hmm. when I let go, everything works out easier. And so it's just that, that reprogramming. So if you're listening right now and you're like, gosh, but I just struggle with this. We just invite you to just continue to, to try. Right. Yes. Go Lillian, go. I have a great thing that just popped in my head. Pretend like it's Christmas and by not letting go and having so much control, it means that you know, every single gift that is under the tree. Mm. No longer 
is it fun to wake up in the morning and unwrap those gifts because you already know what's going to be there, right? That's kind of the control. Yes. But if you can let go of the control and just expect these gifts and really know, oh my God, I don't know what's coming, but I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. It's exciting. Yes. You just have that attitude. Yes. Then it can be like Christmas and it can be exciting and you don't have to control it. Oh, you can have love that. amazing gift that gets, you know, put in front of you. You're like unwrapping it like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. that you said that. We said this when we were yeah. together. I said, it's just really awesome gifts wrapped in ugly wrapping paper, right? So like the yeah. more that when you're going through stuff and like shit hits the fan and things aren't going the way that you want them to, if you can just be like, oh, this is just the really ugly wrapping paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, very true. And I, and I love this also, this overarching theme too of like, we always talk about not being uh, childish, but childlike. And what you just described is very childlike. Like, we get to like really like play and have more fun in relationships. I think mm -hmm. a lot of relationships, sure. traditionally speaking, are just like, gosh, so routine, boring, and like, you got to do all this kind of stuff. And the, what you guys are saying and what you guys are exemplifying is, you can see it in your energy and and your mm -hmm. excitement and and whether it's for each other, life, business, whatever. It can be that way. We hope that you all listening can start to uh, rep, if you will, mm -hmm. those new practices and really start to rewire. So, yes. babe, do you want to take us away for yes. our last segment? And, and with that, you know, I think maybe you know this this segment called favorite finds is really just any sort of favorite find that maybe has helped you with this process, right? And in any sort of capacity, yeah. whether it's a book, a poem, a, a song, uh, a place, it could Russia, be anything. anything. Favorite, uh, find. favorite finds. Lily and CJ, whoever wants to go first. I think courses for me have mm -hmm. been my favorite finds. I mean, as soon as I really put myself in a course and dived in, uh, you know, that first one for the weekend and then went from there, those were the times that I could really just devote to me. There was no phones, no distractions, no nothing. And I took myself on this crazy, amazing, hard journey that mm. has just unfolded a lot of amazing gifts. Mm. I love that. Yes. Diving in. I think for me, look, I'm going to give you a lot. Um, courses, books, mentors, coaches, all of it. Dive in. Do it. Um, there, Lil, Lil knows. There's a quote I live by. Um, the creative adult is the child who survived. Yes. Mm -hmm. The adult is the child who survived. Never forget that meaning. Do not disregard what you're passionate about. Doesn't mean you have to make money at it. People think, oh, passion, money. Ah, I get it. No, 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 no. That was that individual part that I was talking about at the onset of this conversation. What do you like to do and make sure you fulfill it? You like to go shoot hoops. You like to go paddle boarding. You like to go rock climbing. And it doesn't have to be with your partner. Mm -hmm. Right. It can be solo or it can be joint. Yeah. There are things we love doing together. But there are things that I remember for the longest time I just stopped doing. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I thought, okay, life's taken over. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, I, right the time. I drew since I was a little kid. My grandfather taught me how to draw. That's the reason I got this tiger tattoo here. That's my grandfather who called me Tiger from the moment I popped out of the womb. Mm. You know, was, my nickname was Tiger growing up. It's yeah. like, that is my reminder. And that quote in my head that plays on repeat, don't let it go. Mm. Don't let that childlike innocence ever go. Yeah. I love yes. that, that yes. playfulness. And especially in relationships, I think that's just so key because the more that we play together, the more that we bring out that childlike essence, I feel like it's really like sometimes I really love looking at him and I just see like his, his little self and I'm like, oh, I totally see like your little kid self playing right yeah. now with my little kid self. Yeah. And it is this, this connection, this playfulness that, that makes life fun, right? Because mm. there are so many challenges and, and life does throw curveballs and it's like, choosing a partner or being with a partner and also showing up in a way where it's safe to play. Yeah. I think I've been in relationships in the past where I didn't feel safe to be fully myself. I didn't feel safe to play. And you know, it's a, it's a two way stream though. You know, it's like, that has to be like, if you're in a relationship and you don't feel safe to play, mm. talk about it, yeah. you know, like express that you don't feel safe to play and also check in with yourself of like, am I creating that space am mm -hmm. i allowing for yeah. the other person to feel safe to play yeah so i think it's just so important and you guys thank you so much for being yes. on the show and all the wisdom that you shared and yeah. i hope everybody you need to go follow both of them go watch chasing glory it's incredible lillian garcia and cj yeah uh, where's the best place for everybody to find you 
Uh, for me, it's at Lillian Garcia with one L in the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, for that, for Instagram and Twitter, Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. For Chasing Glory, it's at Chasing Glory on Instagram. And of course, ChasingGlory.com or LillianGarcia.com for all my stuff. Yes. Then, mm. uh, I'm really easy. Instagram at Christopher Joseph and Joseph is J O Z E P H. Z. Love it. I love it. I love it. Well, well, I'd love to ask you just like if you guys have one final share, you know, if you could leave the audience listening with any final words of encouragement, advice, tips, tricks, um, what would that be for you guys? Don't just be nice. Above all, and most importantly, be kind. Mm. Be kind yourself. Be kind to your partner. Yeah, listen to, you know, I had an exercise that a coach gave me uh, not too long ago, and it really was an eye-opener for me. Uh, She said, write down, like, close your eyes and start writing down Mm. the words that you said to yourself that are not so kind. And when I started doing that, I realized that the bullies that I talked about earlier, um, they're gone, but that what I ended up doing was keeping the bully alive because I ended up bullying myself with the words that I've been using to myself. Mm. And when I saw those words on the paper and I said, Oh my God, I've been the worst bully to me. So really pay attention to the words that you're saying to yourself because it does matter and switch them and, Mm. and just shower yourself with kindness, not just other people, which is great, but you have to start with you. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for sharing some absolute mic drops uh, (laughs) as we leave here. uh, Thank you, Relationship Renegades. You guys are absolutely Relationship Renegades. We just thank you for your time, energy, and presence today. And for those listening, uh, you're listening to Relationship Renegades on Fun for Life Radio. I'm your host, Emilio Palafox. And I'm Rachel Brooks-Smith. And make sure you go follow Lillian Garcia and Christopher Joseph. We love you guys. See you on this side. (laughs) Bye. Thank you.